Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, today we want to spend a little bit of time just talking about footnotes and endnotes, when to use them, and just a little bit about how to set them up. Seems fairly trivial at the surface, but we do want to cover how to get them in there, how to style them, and a few other little things you may not be thinking about. Welcome back. I am Tom Morosky, an author and a technology consultant. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about formatting things in LibreOffice. We're going to be looking at footnotes and endnotes. And I'm going to take you through how I set up two separate books here. One of these is the book I Am Not Amused. Link will be in the description down below. So this book, we have 99 references from various research projects, other uh, games, uh, movies, music, songs, news articles, research articles, a lot of heavily researched things. And what we did in this book here is we put in a lot of the notes in the background. And in so doing, we basically, it's basically a very hev heavily researched book where we have a, an easily organized bibliography at the very end where you can kind of go through and figure out where things are in the book and how we styled and formatted that, either putting everything in there and then collecting the references at the end. The other book we're going to highlight is Happy Holidays. Again, link in the description down there for that book. This was co-authored with a friend of mine, and what we did is we went through the research and the history and some of the prevailing opinion of uh, Anne Farskell and truthful stories behind several of the American holidays that we have from the specific Christian perspective. Now, in developing this, we actually went back through. We looked at old church history documents. We looked in the Thanksgiving section. We looked at founding documents in the country about Thanksgiving. We have a look at some research articles from surrounding Christmas and other things like that. Only in this case here, we pulled a lot of generic information out from a few different sources like uh, there is a book called The Book of Days, which is basically goes through histories of holidays from, I think it's, I don't know, 1800s, early 1800s, 1836. We have um, some other antiquities books. We have History of the Christian Church. These were all just general, uh, general statistics, general uh, research sources, general things that kind of went back from early history writings. We also did the National Retail Federation, which compiled statistics that we used on nearly every holiday as well. Those general references are in the back, but they're not specifically quoted anywhere. Those were nearly every chapter pulled from those at some source or another. But then we would get into some areas where we wanted to either quote from a news article or maybe clarify something in the text. And in this book, we ended up using uh, footnotes for that. So on this page here, for example, 140, we have footnotes referencing George Washington's Thanksgiving proclamation in October 3rd, 1789, and Abraham Lincoln's uh, October 3rd, 1863 proclamation of Thanksgiving. And then we have another one on how did Thanksgiving end up on the 4th of uh, Thursday. So we actually had some specific references and articles and things in there. And what we want to do here is we want to talk about how those got put into place, where they are, how we styled those, how we formatted those. Very simple overall process. But we're going to jump on over to the computer to have a look at how I formatted all those and the things that you might need to know on LibreOffice. All right, so over on the computer, we are going to first have a look at I Am Not Amused, where we've used endnotes almost exclusively. So I'm not even sure if we have footnotes in this book or not. And uh, But this one is very well done with the endnotes. And one of the things that we notice here on our styling is we actually have a specific endnote style. Let's go ahead and have a look at what we have going on here. Uh, outlines and numbering is just defaulting to text body as a default. Numbering style is list five, so you can remember our list styles. Let's pause real quick and have a look at our list styles. So here's what we have for this. So our basic organization, we're using one, two, threes. We're starting with just our number one. And then we can see how we have our alignment set up. We're not using anything over there or over there because I'm using everything as basically pure customized. So we did a separate video looking at how to stylize your lists because they're a little bit trickier. Back to our end, end note here. The other 
other areas, we might have some differences as to where the indentations happen to be, alignments, nothing else really fancy or out of the ordinary, but you can see I did drop the font size down a little bit. Now, all of your endnotes are collected at the end of the document, and the default for endnotes always goes to the end of the document because that's really what it is. Now, if you're doing something like you want to have your notes at the end of each chapter, or maybe even you want to organize your, your notes to have uh, a chapter section. So chapter 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, chapter 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you actually want to use footnotes rather than endnotes to do that. And then you collect all those endnotes together. So what we're actually doing here is you can see this blue line. That means we actually have a section break here and I've collected all of the references for the previous section down here. We're not going to talk about how to do that in the video. Uh, if that's something people really want to see how to do, I, I will do that. I actually had at one point in time was going to do that. And I was like, eh, that's so easy. I don't know if I want to go into it, but maybe I will anyway. So regardless, though, we, what we want to do is we just want to find our reference where we're going to. Let's just click on this guy here. And you can kind of see how we are. Uh, we have our, our superscript up here. You can see that's not specifically defined as a superscript. That's actually just defined by the internal system manages your endnotes and your footnotes. If you go into your tools and footnotes and endnotes, you can kind of see how these are organized. So here we can actually choose where we're starting each one at. So you can choose to start each, uh, each endnote each time the endnotes recollect. Uh, of course, here's our after. So after every one of our entries, we have a period, so it goes one, two, three, et cetera, and then we have a dot, and then I do a space, and then we go into our uh, whatever our endnote is from there. We're actually managing that in the list style with the, um, uh, with the spacing. You can see the paragraph style pulls all defaults from endnote, page style pulls all things from endnote, so everything basically goes into the endnote style. All right, so that's fairly simple. Uh, you decide you're going to put an endnote in there, and then you just go under your insert, and down here, footnotes and endnotes, and then choose, do you want to insert a footnote or an endnote? All right, so in this case, in this particular book, we're using extensively endnotes, and as soon as you create a new endnote somewhere, it's going to create a new one, and you'll notice that it does put it in direct exact order. Let's call this new test endnote. And of course, if I click this, it's going to go right back on up. So you can kind of see that it borrowed from all of the styling of right around it. What I might want to do is you'll notice that it actually picked the italic style that came with it. Since most of the rest of my endnotes are not italicized, you're just going to want to grab that and unitalicize it. You can come, come down and see where that guy happens to be. All right. Now that is managing your endnotes. Very simple. Uh, system just you do want to set a specific paragraph style and then you want to set your list style because it is running a list so again modifying your endnotes go into your outlining and numbers you want to select a numbering style from your list so if I were to come down here and mess it up and hit apply you'll see that it, what it's going to do is it's going to change let me move this out of the way a little bit here you'll kind of see that what it'll do is it'll mess around with our spacing a little bit. And so we spent some time just kind of figuring out exactly what type of spacing we wanted and got it figured out exactly the spacing like, like, like it is here. If you grab other list styles, you might do something like that. Uh, you might do something like uh, that one's many of these may not apply. Okay, there you go. So you can kind of see that uh, you do need to make, make sure that you're pulling the right list style from here. And then of course, just go into your list styles and then just make any modifications in here as far as your styling, where you're numbering at, how your systems go, and even all of your spaces and things like that. So we covered that in a whole separate video, so I'll link the video on how to adjust your list styles themselves. They are a little trickier um, than you would actually think. So that is the book where we're using EndNotes quite exclu exclusively. We do not want to save any of these changes, of course. And uh, now on to Happy Holidays that I co-authored with a friend of mine. So this one here 
we chose to do footnotes instead of endnotes for our references, just because the style and the formatting of book, we thought it'd be a lot more interesting. So whereas in the uh, I Am Not Amused book, that one actually has... That one will actually have just hundreds of references in there. I think there's right about 100 references in it, I think. And then it, it's a very well-research driven book. This book is not quite as research driven, but it does have a lot more observations. And then where we did want to pull something in, we actually used the end notes to list all of our references here. So you can see on this note here, we're pulling in a reference from the History of the Christian Church, Volume 3, Section 76. And we don't have a single list to go to, so a single bibliography. What we did end up doing is at the very end of the book, we did put a just a general bibliography in here, which weren't specifically mentioned uh, throughout. You do see that specific references listed throughout as footnotes. So if there were any specific text, for example, we did, um, if we were to go into nearly every holiday, Let's actually grab the Thanksgiving holiday because this one here, there's a lot of uh, old footnotes and references. This is just a footnote references about our uses of the term Indian instead of Native American. We looked at um, uh, we looked at uh, some news articles and we also pulled in some references from the original uh, transcontinental Thanksgiving Day proclamations, other founding uh, founding documents of our country. And uh, so in these cases here, we see the same same setup. Just go into your insert and under at footnote and endnote. In this case, we're just going to pick our footnote. This is going to, now there's, there's the option to put it at the bottom of the page or the option to put it at the end of the chapter or the option to put it at the end of the document. So you have all of those. Again, go under tools, footnotes, and endnotes. And now we're going to go to the footnotes tab. You can see here we are using the lowercase Roman numerals. You can pull this down and choose whatever you would like as your footnote spacers. You can go, you know, whatever size you want. So if I were to do this, there's no apply button, so I'll have to go ahead and hit that. You can see though that's automatically going to change all references. Let me zoom that in for you. You can automatically see that it changes all references from the lowercase Roman to the capital Roman. So you can kind of make all your changes like that. And that's going to apply automatically throughout the entire document. That's why you don't want to do things manually. You want to let the automated system work. Again, here's the end of the page, end of the document. There should have been one at the end of the chapter as well. Um, we can actually do a separate video about how to put those at the end of the, the chapter if we want to. Um, so here's counting per page, counting per chapter, counting per document. So this means is that where does it restart? You'll notice that on the footnotes, you cannot start anything other than number one, and that's going to count them. So do you want your footnotes to recount? It's the first point, each page or each chapter or each document. So you can do whichever way you want. Again, if you wanted to do something like before or something after, so let's do three dots, push OK. It's going to go down to your lowercase i because we reset the lowercase i, and then it's going to put three dots and then the space. So you can kind of see that those are your options. Let's just do a couple more spaces there. You can see that's just going to go ahead and uh, push those ones out. All right, so let's get rid of those. Whoop, wrong button. All right, so here's the paragraph styles. Here is the footnote anchor. This one here, I could have probably used a, a larger footnote anchor. We went with this text area footnote anchor here. Uh, we could have done something else more like this. It's going to bring it in a little bit more there. All right, so you can kind of set all of your styles. Once again, if we go back up to our style system and we go into our styles, uh, when you head on down now up here it's going to grab whatever styles up here so these guys here this is all kind of done automatically inside of your um uh, inside of your tools menu i'd have to see how to change the the actual style of this that if you can change it i'm not sure but down here our style is again for the footnote style Again, if we modify it just like we did before, you can select your various numberings. I'm not sure if I actually have. I do have different things applying in here. So you can kind of see you can do any type of numbering formatting that you would want to do. 
In this case, we just use the none to move it everything over over like that. All right, and then of course for everything else, we just simply set our for, uh, for formats and fonts the same. Pick our font, pick our font size. You all notice it is a little bit smaller font size than the text. That's fairly standard in doing any type of footnotes. But that's kind of our, our logic. Nice and easy, uh, very simple to do footnotes and endnotes. And again, the footnotes will collect either to the end of the chapter or you can collect them to the end of the document. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we collect them at the end of the document. So let's go ahead and do that. And then here you'll see that uh, it's going to pull all those out. And then here's our references. So here's where our reference is there. So that kind of does at the end. Now, this guy here, the reason it's doing that is it's our footnote page default is um, obviously has never been formatted. You can kind of see it's still eight and a half by 11 versus the rest of the books there. I could probably try and throw it into something, another page format, and I don't think I'll be able to. Um, but we have to go back through and, and fix the um, endnote page should we wanted to use those, or our footnote page, I guess, if we wanted to use one of those. In this case, I never formatted that inside the document. So if I wanted to, let's reset it back to footnote page. I'm messing everything up here, aren't I? Get modify. Remember, this was a 5.5 by 8.5. So there we are. Now we're back to that. Of course, I messed up all the rest of my book. They're all footnote pages now. <laughs> easy to fix. Easy to fix. Just kind of showing you guys the, some of the things that you can do with it. So anyway, uh, that is how you can manage your footnotes, manage your end notes uh, throughout your book. And again, I'm going to close this guy out and not save anything. So Hopefully that helps you out when you're thinking about footnotes, think about endnotes, when to use them, where to use them. Uh, it's really kind of your preference, whether you want to have them on the page of the actual reference or at the very end of the book. Uh, I think the more trendy thing to do now is at the end of the book, but separate them chapter for chapter. That's something I haven't done before and might have made more sense to do. I am not amused like that, but it wasn't as trendy to do that when I published that book. So... Uh, but regardless, uh, that is how you can manage your footnotes, manage your endnotes, looking at your styles, formatting, uh, how they appear in the document, where they appear in the document, and things like that. So with that, thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that we have taught you how to get your writing done.